Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. How are we this morning? Good? Well, welcome to United Church of Chapel Hill. Um, today we are gathered in our festival worship service, which begins at 9.45 a.m. We also have an 11 a.m. service, which is our bilingual English and Spanish multicultural service um, that is in the assembly hall across the other side of the building. If you are joining us today for the very first time or welcoming us or visiting us, we want to welcome you to this space. Um, we are a church that um, has a 
wide embrace for all people. In the back of the pews, um, if you would like to connect with us, we have our orange um, and blue cards. And as the offering plate goes around, you can fill that out and then drop it um, so that we'll have an opportunity to further connect with you and welcome you um, to our church. I have a few announcements this morning. Um, the first is that next Saturday is our big and highly anticipated yard sale, um, which begins at 8 a.m. and goes till 12 p.m. And today is the last day that we are accepting donations. So if you have any decluttering to do or anything that you can donate, um, you have until today, and you can bring that, um, those donations to room 235, which is in the fellowship hall. The funds for that yard sale will go directly towards supporting a language learning ministry here at the church, which both will help immigrants learn English, um, but also we hope to see um, some Spanish classes for those of us who want to grow in our Spanish language and grow in our connection um, with the beautiful and wonderful people of La Mesa. Also, um, we, uh, April is Earth Month, and the Board of Adult Ed has scheduled three Sundays of outdoor activities during the month of April. And today, Alan Johnson will lead a walk around the church grounds discussing choices for area plantings and conservation gardening. And so if that's something that interests you, you can join with them at 11 a.m. outside on the portico. Welcome to United Church of Chapel Hill. We now turn our hearts and our minds to the living God through prayer. Good morning. Please join me for the call to worship found in your bulletin. Mother of all, my God, you are very great. God who makes springs gush forth for all to drink. God who brings forth food from the earth for all to eat. God who rises for all to flourish, for all to be in relationship with you. We rejoice in your abundant love and care with all your beloved creation. If you'll join me for the prayer of invocation. Compassionate One, you labor to nourish and sustain us. Help us to participate more holistically in your creation. And by your example, may we earnestly labor with you in global solidarity to build peace and justice with all people. Amen. If you will remain standing for the uh, hymn of praise, Thine is the glory, found in your bulletin.
first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 3 to 5 and 12 to 14. The reading begins with the risen Jesus appearing to the apostles prior to his ascension and concludes immediately after the ascension. Jesus presented himself to the apostles, living after his suffering through many convincing proofs, by appearing to them 40 days and speaking about the reign of God. And staying with them, Jesus commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, rather to wait there for the promise of the faithful one. What you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they entered the city, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were persevering in prayer together with women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his sisters and brothers. The second reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Part of Jesus' farewell discourse to the disciples after the Last Supper. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, then also believe in me. In my Abba's house there are many homes. If it were not so, would I have told you all that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you all, I will come again and will take you all to myself, in order that where I am, there you may be also. Thus I am going, you all know the way. Thomas said to him, Rabbi, we do not know where, are you going, where you are going. How would be able to know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Creator except through me. If you know me, you will know my Abba also. From now on, you do know and have seen my Abba. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Peter. Good morning. I invite the children of our church to join me here for a short message before we go downstairs. Good morning, my love. Good morning. Hi, George. Good morning. Hi, Milo. I missed you. Are you up out of the mountains? You did. Hello. Good morning, good morning. So in the story that we just heard, and in the story of Easter, I find a great mystery. Do you like mysteries? Yeah. I do. Yeah, you do too. Mysteries, don't. Re you don't. You like to know. I believe that about you, George. You like to know what is happening and that it's real and true. Yeah. So this might be a gift for you today, right? I too like to know and be sure about things, right? Mysteries are a little concerning because we're not quite sure. And you have to have a little faith in your heart to believe. And that comes with time and experience, right? But here is what I want you to hold with you today. In all, a wiggle worms are on the playground. We're going to go see those in a little bit. Maybe even our playground snake. See that creature outside? So, dead. our playground is full of love and life. And that is the number one. You're so right. What I want to give you in these stories that we hear around Easter is the word peace. What does that word mean to you? Good morning, birthday girl. How are you? What does peace mean to you? Um, peace means that you have peace. 
It means that you're calm, right? Your body's calm. Your heart feels calm. Your brain feels calm. Your spirit feels calm. Can you put your hand on your heart and take a deep breath with me? I give you this gift because this is what keeps me going when I have to think about these stories of Easter and the mystery all around us of everything that we encounter is that to me, God feels like peace. And that peace comes from knowing, no mystery, knowing that you are beloved just as you are. However you show up, whatever you say, whatever you do, how you choose to love, how you choose to be, how you choose to learn, you are beloved. In this space, look behind you. By each of these people, and by God, and by your community, just as you are. You don't have to do anything to earn it. And that, to me, feels like peace. So when everything feels noisy and crazy and unsure and a little bit chaotic, I just go to God and I feel that peace. And that's a gift I want to give you. I also want to let you know that I feel great peace around my friend, our friend, Miss Jenny. Many of you know that she fell earlier this week and she broke her wrist. She was in a lot of pain, but she went to doctors who helped her feel much better and she's healing and she's surrounded by lots of love and care. And I think we could do that too, right? Could we give her more love and care? Could we wish her well in our prayers and our heart and she'll continue to get better and better and better and become, and then she'll come back to us? That'd be great. I think so. Can you say your prayer with me? Dear God, Dear God thank you for peace. Thank you for Miss Jenny. Thank you for her healing. Help us to continue to love and care for her and to remember that she and we are beloved just as we are. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. You are invited to stay here in this space or you can come downstairs with me, but we're going to leave with a song as we always do. Can someone please help Miss Julie know when to begin? Hit it. Will you join me in prayer? God, I can't. You can. Please do. Amen. Today's John reading, as Peter mentioned, is part of Jesus' farewell discourse. His physical departure is imminent. And of course, we all know this because we commemorated Holy Week and we celebrated Easter last week. And here, Jesus is gathered, gathered with his disciples. He consoles their fear and confusion, saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled. They have been along Jesus for some time now. They know him to be their long-awaited Messiah, their healer, comforter, and hope. Their hope in a time of chronic suffering at the hands of empire. 
The disciples, just like us, exist in time. And it profoundly troubles them to think their time with Jesus will come to an end. And the end does not seem to make sense to them. How is it possible for their Messiah to be killed? A Messiah being killed goes against their imagination of what a Messiah is. The Messiah should topple the forces of empire, not be stricken down by its sword. What will they do without him? Obviously, their theology will have to change. Jesus is no warlord, but a revolutionary moved by compassion. And Jesus is so patient with them. I mean, after all the time he has spent with the disciples, teaching them about God the Father, demonstrating miracles and changing lives, you know, showing them a new and different way, they are still so, so lost. Thomas seems especially lost. Some erroneously define Thomas by his doubt, especially in light of John chapter 20. On the day of Jesus' resurrection, Jesus appeared to a group of his disciples. Thomas was not with them for this notable event. After, the disciples explained to Thomas that they had witnessed the resurrected Lord. And Thomas answered, saying, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. In John 11, Thomas shows great devotion and courage to Jesus, which I point out just to say that none of us, none of us are characterized by one experience. Nonetheless, our text today highlights Thomas's doubt. And we must know he is not alone in his doubts. Maybe Judas turns on Jesus because he doubts. Maybe Peter rejected Jesus three times because of doubt. Doubt shows up in each of the disciples' journeys, explicitly and implicitly. And this makes sense to me, especially when we think of Jesus as our liberator. Jesus breaks our chains. And you know what? Unfortunately, sometimes those chains bring us a false sense of comfort because they are known to us. Therefore, we fundamentally doubt ourselves and talk ourselves away from liberation because our bondage to traditions, systems, and anxieties of this world, that's what we know. And the liberation that Jesus offers us, the pathway to freedom and a new way of living is not pressed down upon us from above, but given to us freely and kindly. Jesus gives us the tools and says, Here, break your chains and follow me forever. And maybe Thomas fears and doubts what it means to live without chains, especially without his shepherd in the flesh to guide him. I can hear Thomas lament now, Shepherd, I am a lost sheep, and I don't know where to go without you. It actually brings me peace to witness to the disciples' doubts. The disciples who spoke with Jesus, listened to Jesus, saw Jesus, smelled Jesus, and touched him in the flesh had their doubts anxieties, and fears. So I think it is valid for us to have our own doubts, especially given that none of us have experienced Jesus in the same way that they did. 
the disciples' doubts. They're wrestling with the mysteries of God and trying to piece together what they don't know with what they think they know. Is faith in practice? We should give ourselves grace when we have doubts when we struggle to believe, when we are afraid of the liberating power of Jesus. Because maybe such an experience is just us practicing our faith, and it is nothing to be ashamed of. Recently, a queer person joined me in my office and asked me some really deep questions. Mainly, they asked, Am I saved? Most of their doubts stem from years of marinating in conditional, homophobic love. And I struggle to even say love next to words like conditional and homophobic. Bell Hooks writes about the importance of defining for ourselves what the word love really means and committing ourselves to its proper use. When I consider the love that Jesus embodied and his command for us to love each other, I understand that conditional love is an oxymoron. And truthfully, it is a sign often of which one is unaware of doubt in the fullness and abundance of God's love. After discussing this person's question for over an hour, I said to them, it sounds like the question you really are asking yourself is if God truly loves you. I can't be sure whether my spiritual listening was correct, but from there I said, yes. Yes, God loves you. God wants to liberate us from any source that would tell us otherwise. In many ways, liberation just really means experiencing and knowing God's abundant love for us and sharing that love with others. This liberation is the way. It is the truth. It is the life. The life that God creates and exemplifies for us through Jesus Christ. This Sunday after Easter, the first Sunday with Jesus departed, It should remind us that our relationship with our shepherd, our guide, and our Messiah continues, even if it is different. As Jesus' disciples, we must embody Jesus' mission of liberating the cosmos through love. And if you look upon the world, if you really look upon the world, you will see glimpses of God's love. You will see glimpses of ordinary and extraordinary miracles. Broken relationships restored. Sick people healed. Neighbors supporting neighbors people visiting the incarcerated, people standing in solidarity with the LGBTQ community, people taking others into their homes, people lifting up their voices against war and genocide. And with each glimpse, I'm reminded that we are on the way with God while God simultaneously goes ahead of us and prepares for all of us a home, a place to dwell, a place to be reunited with our shepherd, with God. 
There Jesus awaits us all. Souls touched, redeemed, and transformed by his liberating love. Amen. You may rise for our hymn of the day. As the deacons come forward, you are invited to give what you have in care and in love for this place where we gather to receive and learn and know God's abundant, unfailing love in a way that prepares it, prepares us to share it with others. Amen.
may be seated. After each petition, when I say, living God, you may respond, hear our prayer. Living God, hear our prayer. Dear God, we join together a week after Easter. You are no longer with us in the same way. But the pain, the suffering caused by empire still is with us in the same way. We can be afraid. We can have our doubts. But Lord, help us witness to the glimpses of your light, your life, your love, to remind us that you are with us and you have gone ahead to prepare a place for us. Living God, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those in our church who are suffering with illness, who are suffering with depression, anxiety. We pray that you accompany them on their in their struggle, Lord. Living God, hear our prayer. We pray especially for Jenny Anderson, who broke her wrist this past week. We pray for healing and recovery. Living God, hear our prayer. We pray for Allison Davidson, who had a fall while suffering from pneumonia. Living God, hear our prayer. We pray for Mark Ellis in the hospital and for their cancer care. Living God, hear our prayer. We say a prayer for Matt Floating. Living God, hear our prayer. We pray for John Rugabo, a Swahili interpreter for the Refugee Support Center whose cancer has returned. Living God, hear our prayer. We now hear the prayers of those gathered here today as they call out to God for God's light and God's love. We listen. Living God, hear our prayer. 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 I pray for the ministry, the language learning ministry that's becoming in this church. Living God, hear our prayer. Living God, hear our prayer. Mm. 
Living God, you hear our prayers. You know what it means to be us, to live in this world, in body, and you have compassion for us so great that you are with us even now. Hear these prayers spoken out loud, those deeply whispered in our hearts, and answer those prayers that we don't even know that we have yet. Lord, we do this, we know this, and we turn to the prayer that you taught us to pray as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you our thanks and praise. You claimed us as you covenant fed us manna in the wilderness the land flowing with milk and honey. We pray our voices with the choirs and with faithful of every time and every place who ever forever sing the glory of your name. table with pure and open hearts. In this place, we are all receivers of grace. Here, we extend forgiveness to others as we have received mercy from God. In the bread of heaven and the cup of grace, we are reconciled with God and with each other. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Remember that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took the bread. 
and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, my life sealed in love for you, and given to you as a sign of forgiveness and grace. Wherever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of your bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another until we feast with him and all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Amen. As a sign of God's grace and the openness of this table, the cup contains grape juice, and gluten-free bread is available in the basket with purple linens. The deacons are available in the rear of the sanctuary where they offer healing prayer. The feast is ready, and have no doubt that you are welcome at God's table. Come freely as you are.
please rise in body or in spirit and join me for the prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, gracious God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together hymn 230. today's benediction, I want to leave you with two questions, just as is our tradition in La Mesa. What glimpses of God's love have reminded that you, that you are on your way home to God? And number two, is doubt a sign of unfaithfulness? And what has led you to this belief? Go in God's grace and God's love. Amen. <laughs>